Um, and uh, sorry, <laughs> got it. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to talk to you uh, a little bit today um, about our project at the city of Gainesville. Um, on the line should be one of my former colleagues from the city. His name is John John. Uh, John is actually our service design strategist and uh, the mastermind between uh, behind many of the testing activities and um, data that you'll see today. Um, John really uh, kind of takes the data, captures the data, makes a presentation. Weekly we meet to discuss then how we're going to move forward um, with the, the website and the iterative process that we're in the midst of. Um, oh, so it looks like my slides are not going to advance here. So that's about right. So, um, the city of Gainesville embarked upon the website redesign process in 2019. Um, so we, we got a little uh, sidetracked, of course, by the pandemic, as did many folks. But, um, you know, on top of the fact that our current web or our website at the time was sitting on top of a .NET Nuke server that was no longer even receiving security updates, and was not a mobily responsive site, we actually, um, federal law um, requires that agencies and governments make a good faith effort to create um, a more enhanced customer experience and that we're doing our best to um, digitize and personalize the content that we're delivering uh, to our, our citizens and to make it accessible. Uh, the process was <laughs> very laborious. Um, we did probably a year worth of uh, collections of requirements, both uh, analyzing how folks were using the current website, but also uh, with internal focus groups and user groups trying to determine exactly what the website was doing, what transactions were being performed, how readily they were being performed, and also if there were you know, um, some transactions that perhaps we should be considering doing online that we weren't because we didn't have the capability to do so. We put out a robust RFP. Uh, it was about a year process. Um, we decided against doing a um, custom in-house build of a website. Um, there were many reasons that we wanted to consider doing that. But after talking to other municipalities that had kind of traveled that road before we had, we determined that really the human resources and the financial resources that would be required for um, a custom build in-house was not um, something the city was positioned to take on. So we uh, awarded a contract to a software as a service provider, one that was really the whole site itself was designed with municipal functions in mind. So think garbage collection, parking permits, um, public safety features, uh, things that most uh, local governments are responsible for overseeing. And um, we went forward with that platform. And then it was really, um, the website had not been updated in 11 and a half years. Uh, so it was a very, very old system. There were about 7,000 documents uh, and images on the old website, 800 or so pages. And we went through a very tedious uh, content audit essentially where it was an AIMS process. We determined if the content could be archived, if it needed to be improved. And once it had been improved, we marked it for migration. Um, once that migration process had been completed, we then did a, a soft launch somewhere around June. But that soft launch was very much what we had determined was a minimal viable product that we were going to be focusing on a kind of agile development model and that continual improvement is how we wanted to approach this. Um, so our design experience platform, the SaaS platform we chose um, through a system called Open Cities. 
it gave us the ability to kind of decentralize content management. We were realizing that much of the content on the old website became outdated or inaccurate because as rules and regulations would change, um, the, those changes would not make their way to the communications department. So we basically now are able to give departments um, administrative access to the back end without fear that they will kind of blow the website up. It's very formulaic and form based content entry. And so we can rely on individuals across the organization to to make modifications that of course comes <laughs> with its own set of challenges because um, you know, uh, writing for the web is not necessarily something that is innate in um, some of the individuals who have been assigned uh, these tasks, but we do have systems and structures in place to uh, check and review content before it's published. Um, so they develop content in a sandbox and it goes through a review and approval process before it hits a forward facing um, page. Uh, one of the most important things about this new platform was that it was device agnostic. Um, so many folks have talked about designing with mobile in mind, but we wanted to design across all spectrums, including tablets, and that the user experience was um, you know, successful and enjoyable no matter what device you were on. We were, prior to moving to the Granicus platform, we were... Uh, responsible for our own hosting and security, and also for accessibility and meeting those standards. That becomes the burden of the vendor, um, which was um, certainly a, a selling point for, for our local government that we could um, have guarantees uh, that the, the vendor would be keeping up with those regulations and ensuring that the platform was delivering on um, access, accessibility measures. Um, it also gave us a more robust um, search functionality and lexicon and social sharing capabilities, which the old website did not have. The, the new website was really, um, we, we focused on organizing the content by the tasks and transactions that we saw were kind of the, the, the most prominent on the old website. Uh, our old website had been organized very much by department. So if you wanted to find your trash collection day, for instance, you would have to know that it was uh, the responsible party was public works. Um, that's not how a typical user would go to look for their trash and collection day. Um, the same is true with um, you know, code enforcement reporting a code violation is something people want to be able to do regularly, not be directed first to learn about the mission of the city code enforcement uh, office. So it was very transactional in nature how we decided to organize the content. We also, in looking at some of the data, realized that many internal users were searching for information more than say even some of our neighbors. And so uh, we identified that uh, staffers in the city were using the old website uh, essentially as a kind of archiving document to find their own um, documents and needs rather than keeping it on their hard drive, um, which did many things. Um, one being oftentimes making outdated documentation come up to the uh, tops of our internal searches. So that was problematic. So very much we were clear with staff that our target audience for the new website was current and prospective neighbors or residents, um, not city staff. And um, there, there were many challenges and still continue to be challenges um, because our internal users are very unfamiliar. They knew where to find the things that they were looking for. Um, and so uh, it, it's been an adjustment in culture and behavior, I think, among city staff, but one that will better serve the forward-facing public that this website is intended to connect with. Um, 
we had a huge mega menu on the front page of the website, which many of our leadership uh, team members preferred, but we could tell them with, you know, in no uncertain terms that really 46% of all the traffic that was coming into the city of Gainesville website was, they were landing on pages inside the website based on an organic search. So people were not necessarily navigating to content on the city website through our menuing system at all. Um, certainly some were and having a logical information architecture is always important, but more and more traffic is coming in directly to websites based on organic Google searches. And the search module itself is the second most used uh, item on the entire homepage. So um, minimizing the, the, the menu navigation was something that we were um, really stuck on. Um, so we launched in June-ish, um, and during the past 14 weeks, we've really focused kind of on discoverability and readability. Um, we've done a series of um, website feedback activities, conduct conducted um, some content discovery tests with our neighbors, both in person and online. Um, we've been able to record how users are moving through our content, what they're looking for, and we're using these kind of recorded user journeys, these heat maps and searches to tell us what we're, we're, what we're missing. And by doing that, we've been able to significantly, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, improve um, the, the user experience. So through improved search terms, reprioritizing kind of our content hierarchy and of course the inevitable typographic errors because even the best of us don't use spell check. Oh, this is just a, a few little um, pictures of some of the activities we've been involved with. Um, oh, we did... I don't think you're sharing your screen. Oh, did it just escape? Uh... Or have I been sharing the whole time? You have not been sharing. I thought you were having issues with your slides. Oh, I'm sorry. Goodness, goodness. Well, that is a shame. Sorry, guys. Let me know if you have issues. Okay, there we go. Yes, we can see your screen now. Oh, no. Okay, well, We'll, we'll get on track now. So here are some photos of some of the activities that we've been doing. Um, we uh, partnered with a magnet program at Lofton High School, also at View Holtz to do some user testing with the high school students at the Senior Rec Center. Um, John even did some intercept testing with a Uber driver who was um, frustrated that he was unable to find uh, city job resources on our website. Um, I won't read through all of the uh, numbers here, but um, since we've launched, this is kind of how much we've been able to uh, accomplish. Um, many of even our surveys, we've kind of iterated and improved upon. We found that people were saying, no, I didn't find what I was looking for. And we assumed by visiting the uh, screen recordings that we would be able to identify what it was that they were looking for and we couldn't find, um, but that wasn't the case. So we created a new um, option that said, if you didn't find what you're looking for, tell us what it was that you were looking for. So we had a better understanding of where we were missing the mark. And some of the key insights, um, this, these are our latest numbers, um, and we're, we're pleased with this number here. It's significantly improving. So about 70% of folks are saying now that they um, are able to find what they're looking for on the City of Gainesville website. This has gone up about 20% since we first started testing. Um, we uh, contribute that one to the fact that we have done quite a bit in terms of identifying 
30 to 40 areas that neighbors had told us were hard to find and figured out how we might improve um, that, uh, that number. Also, uh, you have some super users on the City of Gainesville website who had learned behavior. And uh, when we went back and saw their screen recording, you could see that there was a very specific use case that they were looking for that they didn't find immediately. And um, they abandoned the search. Um, so uh, we're seeing these numbers steadily improve and we're real excited about that. Um, always room for improvement, of course. So these are some of the things that folks told us were hard to find. Um, again, won't go through and read, but some of these things are really important. So if they're difficult to find, that's problematic. And we've uh, been workshopping different ways to move some of these more popular searches to the front. So how easy or difficult is it to use the site? So only 35% said it's extremely easy, but you know, between extremely easy and somewhat easy, we're in the 60% range in, or in or around. So um, again, uh, not terrible, but uh, always room for improvement. Same uh, in terms of the visual appeal of the site. One of the things we continue to hear about the new site is that it's a little bland, a little blocky, could uh, benefit from some additional visuals. Um, but again, going back to what was driving the design decisions was this kind of device agnostic approach and much of the, the blocky and um, simple uh, framework was designed because of um, mobile and tablet devices, but we're, we're still working on ways to visually improve those items. And this is probably one of my, my favorite stats, which is that 90% um, of all of the visitors to our website um, say that they uh, are, are engaged users. We're defining an engaged user as someone who is on the website uh, in the foreground uh, for more than 10 seconds or someone who has um, visited more than two pages on the website or has triggered some sort of predetermined conversion event. So what neighbors liked about the website? Um, you know, the thing that's so funny about this is some of the things that some people like are the very things that others think need to be improved. So um, such as life, but um, they like that it's easy to find information, that it's clean, that it's organized, that it's e easy to navigate, and that um, we've done our best to make it more accessible through the accessibility widget. I learned a fact actually about 70% of users with a disability leave a site upon reaching it if it doesn't seem apparent that there is a way for them to access the information. So having that accessibility widget is a um, great thing for a municipality to have. Um, what neighbors want us to improve? Uh, more visually appealing, usability on mobile devices, prioritizing our tasks, and refining our information architecture and improving its readability. So what have they been looking for? So our top 10 most common searches, uh, actually, and you can really consolidate these permits has to do with parking, permits has to do with zoning, um, zoning and parking have to do with maps. If you drill down a second level on each of these. So these are the, the top 10 most common searches, of course. These can change from time to time. When you're in the summer at the beginning, you will see pool passes. We just had Juneteenth. So that was a big search term there for, for a moment, but this is uh, pretty consistent um, for what we expect to be the top 10 most common searches and what you see here. 
And I apologize about the, the fuzzy graphics. I was telling Jackie before uh, we started today that I was um, trying to convert these slides from <laughs> Uh, a PowerPoint to a Google slide deck, realizing I had no Microsoft on this machine. So uh, my apologies. Um, but this is a visual representation of our kind of top 10 pages. Um, and the two that you see over here, seven and 10 are pages that are not automatically within our top 10 searches and they're not on the front page. So these two things are two pages, two items that we are currently looking for ways to bring to one of these top buttons, knowing that um, we, we've kind of missed the mark with the, the placement of this content. So here is kind of the heat map of where folks are going. Um, and I can tell you that the Parks and Rec page is something that we, we knew from our old website that our neighbors were looking for our parks. They were looking for our events. Uh, we thought we could accomplish that by giving them a more unique way to explore our parks and programming through the Explore Gainesville button, which would put in your address and it would bring you a listing of parks and events close to you. But um, you, we were wrong. We made some assumptions there and only 25% of people who visit to our website are even getting to the Explore Gainesville module. So, um, People are asking for parks, public places, and public events, and they are not making their way to the, the part of the website where we thought we could direct them there. So what is next? Um, our focus for the next phase is gonna be on improving our usability and visual aesthetics. Um, you know, while we're in the, you know, lower 60s, for kind of visual appeal. And we, we still think that there's room for improvement. So we're, we're going to work on those things based on some of the feedback that we've gotten. And these are, are some of the areas uh, where we intend to focus. Um, the translation function on the current website, uh, the, the website can be translated into Spanish through Google Translate, but there was no functionality in the search bar to search in another language, which made it exceedingly difficult, especially since we know that folks are navigating our website largely through the search bar. Uh, so that should, is one of our, our, our next fixes. Um, I actually now think that I have kind of run through this quickly, hopefully, and I've shared, if you all would be willing to oblige, uh, a link to a Kahoot activity, which would give us um, some of your thoughts and feedback on the City of Gainesville website. The activity would only take about 10 minutes of your time. Um, and I hope you might be willing to do that. I'm going to get out of here. Shelby, I think, uh, there we go. Okay. There we go. We, you would only share that link with me, but I got it. Okay. Share it with everyone. Okay. Awesome. So. I will exit out of here then, I think. Let's see if there's anything else. I can stop sharing for now. All right, I'm gonna pause our recording. Thank you everyone so much for taking the, the time to do that. It will give us invaluable feedback from subject matter experts. Uh, we, we do appreciate it. And I'd also just um, like to take a moment to um, introduce you all to, to John, who is my colleague and he's on the line and the, the designer of the questions that you just went through there and 
quite frankly, probably the person who will end up trying to fix whatever it is that we didn't get right uh, and, and that we figure out from your from your data today. So um, John uh, continues to work on this website in the city and will be tasked with continuing to improve and iterate. So he's a great resource for you all and would actually like to stay in touch if you all are interested in, in doing more testing activities with the city of Gainesville in the future. So John, you wanna say hi to everybody? Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Shelby. Um, I would love to uh, get back to this group and do uh, like a focused uh, usability test because um, you guys are subject matter experts in Gainesville. And uh, when we have such a good resource, we'd like to use that. We'd like y'all to like really uh, help us improve areas that we might have missed. So I will definitely be getting back in touch. Absolutely. I can, um, I can put that information in our little Slack channel uh, for anyone interested. Now, uh, just so you're aware, we are like a um, international uh, group. So I know a few of us are definitely stationed in Gainesville, but uh, I can't say for the group. Um, but if it can be virtual testing, so yeah, whatever whatever you got, we're we're open to, and I'm I'm happy to share and sort of try to get as many participants as possible. I'll say that's even better because uh, uh, Gainesville might be a small-ish town, but we are very uh, diverse and international and we have people from all over. So if it is an international group and we have people from all over, we're very, very welcome to join uh, the next session and help us uh, test and improve our website. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, you both, and, and especially Shelby for presenting. And thank you, John, for um, joining. Um, does anyone have any questions about the city website or the process? I would love to just hear a little bit more about that accessibility widget. Um, yeah, I thought it sounded pretty neat. I, um, I don't know if I was like distracted at the moment, but I heard it come up in the slides and I just, I, yeah, I would love to hear a little bit more about what that does and, and how it's worked for you guys. Sure, I'm gonna um, actually ask John. Um, he is uh, the, the individual, I believe, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, that selected the accessibility widget and is actually um, been an advocate in our web group for going beyond the widget that we have to even uh, create greater accessibility on the city of Gainesville website, not completely even satisfied with just the widget we have, which is a vast improvement to where we were before. But John, you want to talk a little bit about the accessibility widget, what it does and what other things you were kind of exploring to make the city website more accessible? Sure. So uh, we use um, a widget from a, a group called userway.org. So userway has got a, you know, it's got a free version, it's got a paid version. Um, so we have the basic version right now, and we were just uh, testing this out. We've seen a lot of municipalities using userway. Uh, we've seen, I think, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of um, UN agencies also use uh, user way. So when we did our first testing, uh, as like Shelby mentioned, the first testing we did was with high school students, and we got an overwhelmingly positive response from both students and teachers. And uh, so a couple of things, and the, uh, particularly what they liked about uh, the widget was, uh, apart from basic functionalities like making things bigger, improving the line spacing and those sort of things, but also the fact that you had a dyslexia friendly uh, font. So uh, the benefit of having a, an external widget is there is a certain constraint in terms of how much we can design, you know, design accessibility into our code design. Um, you know, the, the, especially for a city because we don't have a focused target group 
being a city, everybody who lives in Gainesville is your target audience. So when we design for everybody, our flavor tends to be a bit, you know, bland because it has to suit everyone. Um, so it is, there are a lot of constraints in designing itself, completely designing accessibility into your design. So having a widget like this really helps. So because some of the things that it helps you do is it helps you change uh, contrast of your website in different levels. Uh, another thing it helps you do is highlight highlights wherever your URLs are. So if you have any uh, visual uh, visibility issues, you know exactly where to find it. You can make the text bigger. You can improve spacing. Um, if you're prone to, um, you know, if animation can have a negative impact on you, so you can pause animation. Uh, you can change the contrast of the screen. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do on this website. Um, so based on our user testing, we realized that uh, we we'd like to go with the premium version of user way because uh, you can create certain profiles. So let's say um, if if you if you're a user with uh, learning disabilities, there's a whole bunch of uh, functionalities that user way will give you. So your experience as someone with a learning disability would. Well, let's say new, if you want to design for neurodivergence, let's say you enter the website, you click on learning disabilities or learning challenges, and it automatically populates the filters that make the website more accessible to you. So that's these are some of the things that we plan to do for the next round of the website. Sorry, that was a very long answer. No, thank you. That was really cool. Appreciate it. Especially like the... I didn't even think that there was something specific for like dyslexia friendly font. I've never heard of that. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I agree. I haven't heard of that either. So is and this the a, learning disability one? Yeah. Um, so is this like a, a widget you're building in house or are you working with a, a third party? This is a third party widget. Okay. Um, yeah. You, you will see this in a lot of. Um, municipalities and it, it is becoming popular amongst uh, so I, I think the united nations uh unicef and a couple of uh, un agencies also use the same widget um yeah that's so, so it is a third party widget. very cool so how are you approaching um the you know sort of uh the aesthetic uh feedback that you've gotten how are you moving forward with that well john can probably talk a little more specifically i think one of the things we need to do is um add more images uh where we can um <laughs> and that just to um the the cognitive load is too much on the on the page right now there's a lot of that has to do with content as well. Uh, people like to scan. We're, we're still um, getting responses that some of our pages, which are a little deeper in the website, so we haven't gotten there yet, uh, need uh, better headers to break up the content um, so people who choose to scan uh, have a better understanding without having to read uh, into the fine, you know, the fine text to, to really understand. And also uh, John and I, uh, before I, I left the city, were running the content through um, uh, uh, Hemingway and to, for, for readability to try and bring our, our, our reading level down at least to like, we would always shoot for like seventh grade, but um, mm -hmm more realistic as ninth, I think, for a lot of the things that we're doing. So, um, you know, uh, John, in terms, uh, I, another thing that I know we're doing, we have these blocks and instead of keeping the blocks simply with text, adding icons um, that are representative of the information that they're going to find. So our next level is to, which is kind of a custom design thing that we're going to have to go back to the web vendor to have them design. Uh, John, other than um, adding more imagery, scanning, scannable headers, and um, the uh, 
icons. Are there are there other things I'm missing? That's pretty much it. And I think uh, the only other thing was uh, um, we wanted to add a bit more of a Gamesville flavor to the website. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gamesville has a good art scene. It's a it's a green uh, city. There's a lot of tree cover in Gamesville. So we wanted to like sort of pay tribute to that on the website. That's something which we plan to you know incorporate more coming forward. Going forward. I think another um, piece of feedback, which was probably on the usability and design slide, but very important is we, we haven't been able to identify exactly when it's happening, but some of the buttons um, are not giving kind of the hover over or the click. Uh, so people want those visual cues, the visual feedback for when they're engaging with the content. And there are certain places in the website where that's not happening. Uh, so we need to, um, you know, kind of go through and identify where, where those things are failing to happen and course correct. Yeah. Uh, out of curiosity, have you ever redesigned a website before or was this like a new experience? Um, I have, this is, is probably my fifth, um, never of this size. Most, um, of the sites that I had worked on, which was really, um, probably, uh, <laughs> um, a, a negative thing for, for me, I'd done four or five. So I had this idea of what I would be able to accomplish and how it was going to go. And I realized quite quickly, and even some things it's like, well, nobody's clicking on it. It doesn't need to be there. I have data to prove it. It's the legal requirement, Shelby. You can't just take this off the website. Um, so differentiating between what had to be there, um, what needed to be there, because, you know, um, just in, for instance, um, you know, you don't get a lot of file a complaint for one thing or the other in HR or in uh, Office of Equity and Inclusion, but you, you can't just take it off the website. It has to be there and it should be there. Um, so, you know, being able to kind of prioritize the content and determine what what was legally required, what is a good faith thing to have on the website, um, and, and what we could purge. Um, so the, the organization of the content on the front end and rethinking how we were going to organize the information architecture when there was so much content to deal with um, was quite overwhelming. And I don't know that you can adequately be prepared for, for that, that much, um, but luckily I had a really, a uh, great team of folks, and it wasn't just one person, which before, you know, I and the smaller websites, I was kind of leading the ship and um, up to my own devices, I guess. But having someone like John in the corner, you know, making me really think through every decision. So John was really the kind of the voice of reason looking in the back end and like, well, here are all of the things that we need to be doing. So, um, I got to just kind of help prioritize, but he was, you know, always bringing very good data to the table for us to make good decisions. And there's still plenty to be fixed along the way, but um, having a group and a team effort to, to move it forward was yeah. really critical. Out of curiosity, just because I myself have never redesigned a website nearly of that scale, um, what did that look like when you were first sort of like parsing through all these pages and, you know, looking at engagement, like, did you have like spreadsheets or did you just like bullet list and then like sub pages? Like, we had so many spreadsheets, spread so pages. many spreadsheets. Um, but, uh, you know, the, that was what was so remarkable about the city's website is I would say 20 to 25 pages, and that's a max number, make up 
and, and I am totally just throwing numbers off, off my hip, but 90% or so of, of the, where people were going, it was quite easy to figure out what we absolutely needed to bring people to like, yeah. you have to be able to get people to meeting minutes, agendas, the city commission events, parks, everything that has to do with the department of sustainable development and permitting zoning annexing, um, you know, so there are these like umbrella chunks of content that just really dwarf anything else. So we spent a lot of time figuring out how to make those top tasks across the top, but eat and, and then, you know, coming up with what we thought was the really cutesy way and explore Gainesville to bring people to events and parks, but that didn't work. So now we're like, okay, how are we going to redo this? We know nobody's, you know, clicking on, um, nobody's clicking on public safety, probably because GPD has its own website at this point. So we're going to test it and put parks and public places on the top tasks and wait for three to five months, see if, you know, we need yeah. to make another adjustment. So it's, it's constantly a learning and a guessing game, but, um, it, but it was a lot of spreadsheets, figuring out what the top tasks were going to be, and then what you do with the other 700 pages. And it was really kind of a, we did have a drop down menu that was archive, improve, migrate, and every single URL we went through yeah. and did that. So page by page. Ooh. I'm excited to check out the uh, Explore Gainesville option. Is someone about to say something? Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, whenever you were maybe even starting this process or along the way, whoever was uh, deciding about paying for it, green lighting it, all that kind of stuff. Um, UX stuff takes time and money. Did you, was it, did it take a lot of work to get them on board with some of the more involved UX processes? So <laughs> John can speak to that because to, to be quite honest with you, the city commission, this project, you know, anything that is going to, we made some decisions about going with a software as a service, as I said, rather than um, in-house. In um, and I think many of the folks on John's team, which is strategy planning and innovation, were really wanting to design something custom that we could do all of the very intensive UI UX testing and design to the need of our, our um, neighbors rather than just simply using a product which was municipally driven but out of the box essentially and had very little flexibility uh, to, to meet our specific needs. Um, and so John um, was really, I, I'm in communications and I was in the communications and marketing office. We were really copywriters, content editors, uh, information architecture, and John was on our team to really bring to us the need to, although we didn't have um, the, the, the design, the UX UI process at the front end was not to John's liking. And he can tell you all about that because they came up with a framework and he's like, we didn't even get to test this. How is this going to work? And we, the, the ship had already sailed. So I, I won't um, sugarcoat it and say that we did a lot of um, UI and UX testing on the front end of the website selection, but we did our best with the product that we purchased and our, were, that's really when we came to this decision of we're going to go agile development we're going to know that when we bring this to the people of Gainesville, it is not going to be what we would all be super proud of, but we can, can, but it's better than what we had and we can continue to improve on it and let's commit to that. And then 
John from there wrote us kind of a testing schedule. Here's what we'll do on the first end and what we're going to focus on. And we're not even decommissioning the old website for internal use until December. So we can still go back in house and get access to anything we had before until December, because we are still very much in a testing and a, a, a building mode. And we didn't really bring that level of detail to the commission. We just kind of internally decided that that's how we were going to move forward and do what we knew was best. John, you have any uh, comments on our UI UX process and getting yeah, people on board? I think you explained it perfectly, uh, Shelby. And I, I think what the uh, so a couple of things. So the vendor has the vendor works with municipal government. So uh, we're going with the assumption that they've, you know, they've tested their product, that uh, you know, the layouts, that their templates, um, many times, many municipal governments. But um, most of our focus is now going uh, towards uh, continuous improvement, uh, and uh, until December we have a. I'd say a, a pretty robust uh, testing plan, uh, but even going forward from there, uh, it's really about uh, you know uh, having a proper schedule uh, in place, making sure that uh, we aren't uh, you know dropping it after December, and that's it, right? So uh, we have to continuously collect data, see what's good, what's good, what's bad, uh, what can be improved, and until we redesign our website. Uh, I think the next time we redesign our website, we're going to be in a much better place because the website, uh, the, the lag between what the users want and what we're providing is going to be a little less. So at least that's what we're hoping. Yeah. Um, I should also say too, one of the things that is important for this next website, which we didn't have before, is a governance plan. Um, so now, the Office of Marketing and Communications has scheduled check-ins with content editors in the departments. We'll have somebody reviewing the data say our meeting is with Parks and Rec. So we can do a deep dive then in Parks and Rec information, bring to the table at that meeting a review of what we know about the content that's working and not working in their particular section and kind of have a debriefing and a brainstorming session on what we can do collectively to improve the site and go page by page because it's such a huge a huge website that you know you can't do it all in one big chunk but if we're working together and going department by department and being very specific and intentional about the approach there um, I think that's where a lot of big websites fall off is that we're just done and we're, we're never touching it again, but making those, that commitment to check in with one another is going to uh, pay dividends down the road and keeping the, the site improving and the content fresh. Absolutely. I totally understand in terms of assorted site admins, making sure they feel the need to refresh things. Right. All right. Well, if does anyone have any final questions? We are right up to the just about end of our presentation. Thank you so much, Shelby and John, for joining us and giving this awesome presentation. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. I'll be sending out the uh, Slack info through Meetup shortly. So, and then John. Shelby's got my info if you want to connect about potential, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, user sessions, we can absolutely do that. All right. Cool. Bye, thank guys. you. Yes, Bye. Thank you.